career hat trick. What a win. Final score, Justin Miram three. Montreal Impact uh, yeah, right? two. Woo. <laughs> and now we bring in the face of Columbus Crew SC, former player Frankie Hayduck. Frankie, look at this. Look at this, look at this. Up. Dude, this was Justin <laughs> Miram tonight. Go! Oh, Go. yeah! Do, do, do. Oh, For the record, the segment yeah. hasn't even started. We're going to play Wall of Ten here, all right? We have ten <laughs> topics, some are soccer, Good job, Justin. some are other sports, some are about you. Kayla's here to help you out, but I, I don't think you're going to need it. Okay, let's start right here. The effort from Justin Miram tonight. Where do you rank this as far as great individual efforts by Crew SC players? I mean, a hat trick's a hat trick, man. He carried the team, and you know everyone carries a team when they, when a guy gets a hat trick. So he was on fire tonight. Uh, congrats to Justin Miram, and uh, congrats to that team uh, uh, beating a difficult uh, Montreal team away in in Montreal. It's not easy to do, um, and, and they played great, man. They played some counterattacking uh, style soccer. They had a different style soccer than they normally play. They weren't uh, possession oriented, but they did what they needed to do. They pressured when they needed to pressure, and it was goal after goal after goal. Um, hey, and they came back, and they battled back away from home. Difficult game, three games in, in a week, and they, uh, they capped it off with a, a perfect three points. And Miram seemed like he was on a mission after that last loss. He, he spoke, and he was like, he was on a mission, and, yep. and he, he, he did it. He I mean, came back, he scored three goals in a game. This guy has stepped it up all year when he's yeah. been asked to do, uh, to really answer the call he has. And I think, uh, what, this, this, uh, six goals already, seven goals yeah. almost up for him. I don't know. Uh, you guys, it might be a goal or two off, but, uh, yeah. he, he's up there. He's one of the top, I, I would say now almost top in the league. And, and he's playing like it, and he, deservedly so, because he's been on top of his game. Uh, Coach Burhalter asked him to be a leader on this team, and he has been. He's one of our veterans, and he's showing it. Absolutely. Topic two here. Missing coach. I know you have to kind of toe the company line here. Greg Berhalter <laughs> suspended by MLS for a game earlier this week. Was that the right call there? Um, you know what? Hey, uh, I, th I thought it should have been a, a foul earlier with the clothesline. Sure. But yeah, whenever, a whenever a coach backs you up like that and, uh, and kicks the ball at the other guy's head a little bit, and maybe <laughs> accidentally, but, uh, you know, he still had a bit of, of grit in him. And I, I played with Greg before, so that was probably half accident, half not. Um, he accepted the red card. Um, they reviewed it, and, you know, I think it was deservedly so, but probably should have been one beforehand. And it's always good to know your coach could back up the players. He said that that was the first time he's been ejected as a coach. Yep. Is that good to see as a player sometimes? I know that seems crazy, but just to see that fire. Yeah, well, I mean, he, he was, I, I can tell you this. He was ejected plenty of time as, as, as a, a player, player as well. Yeah, absolutely. He's a hard, great guy, so I'm surprised he, he lasted this uh, <laughs> long without, without getting the red card. But, hey, that, that, that shows your team that you're behind them, that you're going to battle for your players. And mm -hmm. if you're a player's guy, that's what you want out of your coach. So it was awesome for me to see it, too, even though uh, it, it hurt us in the long run. Um, um, it, it, it'll be a gain in the future for absolutely. him and, and the team. Let's talk goals here with a lot of L's. Goals Goals for the rest of the season. How far can this team go? Well, I mean, hey, you, you talk about it. How are we in, over the last uh, four years? You know, first year you took a team that hadn't made the playoffs in two years. You get into the playoffs. Okay, we lose in the first round. Next year, we, uh, the expectations are a little bit more. And hey, we make the MLS Cup final. Finals. You, you, right. you lose in the MLS Cup final, uh, and it was one that we wanted. We all had it here. But you know what? There was 22, 23 other teams that would wanted to have been there. The next year, you have some controversy with with uh, a leading goal scorer Kakamara at the time um, it, you have some controversy in in uh, three of our main players being injured right. throughout the whole year um, and in it, it goes in, in in terms you know that that, that happens that you had those years then you look at this year hey we're right there at one point we we're first place in the league we, we're tearing it up and for me you're only as good as your last game right we're three points in we're right in the mix of things and uh, for me the, the sky's the limit for this team the, the the forward is meant to score goals uh, there's guys it's a very offensive uh, minded team um, what they struggle with a little bit I think is uh, you guys see is a counterattack but hey they, they're, they're solid in the back now they've, they've got some great acquisitions and for me um, this is a team that not only is known around the league to be a very tough team to play against, it's known around Europe, guys. And mm -hmm. um, Coach Burhalter just had a great article in uh, 442 Magazine, which is, which is one that talks about the whole entire European style of soccer. And he was at the top of, uh, of their style that they like. So good stuff for us and good for the young guys to, to see that. Absolutely. Sorry, I talk a lot, guys. It's, it's probably does, supposed to be a little bit quicker. It's, it's but just how it is. Here's some insight. It's right? going to be Wall of Six tonight, I have a feeling. Yeah. We'll, we'll get through it. All right. <laughs> MLS looking to expand here, Frankie. Give me a couple cities. You
you'd like to see the MLS go to? Yeah. Wow. Well, I mean, there's there's plenty of them out there, you know. And you know, as, as you know, David Beckham's been trying in Miami. That hasn't yeah. worked out. Um, you're seeing now Drogba in Phoenix, mm -hmm. yeah. another great, uh, great great area that uh, the MLS uh, checked out. Atlanta. I mean, the facilities, unbelievable, yeah. top of the line. To, uh, I mean, uh, I would say some of the best facilities in the world. Uh, San Diego's out oh, there. Oh, look at you. Uh, uh, he's, uh, yeah. As a team, Just I'm a saying. San Diego guy. Yeah. And, and for me, hey, I, I would love to see them get, uh, get a team as well. That, that, uh, it's a soccer city. Sure. They, they love soccer there. And they've and lost they every other sport lost, pretty much. Uh, one of my favorite football teams of all time, yeah. uh, the San Diego Chargers. So uh, tough for me in my heart. But, hey, they want to combine it uh, and uh, with, with uh, potentially San Diego State yeah. and do that whole deal. So, I right, man, I think they deserve one. Uh, they have, uh, I think you're seeing a trend with, uh, in the MLS with owners uh, uh, privately funding stadiums. Mm -hmm. And those are the guys I think that are right now are, are getting in with the stadiums. And, um, you know, who, who knows what the future holds for us here in Columbus. But hopefully we, we get a new one here soon, even though we, we have the best uh, and the, the only uh, and first ever uh, in Malfrey Stadium, you know, uh, uh, soccer specific soccer stadium. Right. Sorry, uh, so soccer specific stadium. But, um, you know, it, sky's the limit here. And, and you've seen, like, uh, I've mentioned this before and uh, I keep on talking but um, th the growth of MLS and, and in terms of a lot of the other leagues in 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 in, in uh, professional sports here in America every everywhere else in the world it's grown it's it's, it's, it's topped out yep. here we haven't topped out yet right. you know in football we have 105,000 seat stadiums in Ohio State you know how much bigger can we get there um, in Dallas under almost 200,000 you know in Atlanta beautiful new facility almost 80 90,000 so they're topping out with these stadiums but the growth in MLS you're seeing now, Portland going from 25 to 35 and selling out. Yep. Uh, a team in Seattle going, you know, starting a, a, as, a, as a two year, five years, ten years ago, they were a second division team, but they have a history of loving soccer there. They went from a, a 3,000 seat stadium to selling out 45,000 seat stadium. Yeah. So yeah. growth is there. Growth we're is there. ready, and hopefully it's here in Columbus too. All right, memories. Favorite memory as a player? Do you have one? Oh man, well, I had, come on guys. How about when you had your cast? Well, no, I have to be lifting the cup here. You know, I'm going to say that one because that, that was a year that, I mean, that, that could have been matched by this team. Yeah. We were a gritty team. Um, we, were, we were expected to get by every preseason poll that year dead last yeah. in the MLS. And that was a team that took it upon their own shoulders to, to get nitty, to get gritty, to grind out what we were all about. And that's, uh, that's showing uh, what, we, what they thought we weren't about. And that's uh, winning. And we won. And that, that team uh, and that city brought a championship uh, uh, to us in, in 08. And it, it wasn't just us that team did, but the city, like I said as well. That's when right. the city came together. The Nordic was really pumped up. And that's when you really saw craziness get that's to unfold the, that's the best in type of soccer, win. you know? That's we, the best type of win when people don't think you're going to, right? We got to keep hustling there. World Cup yeah. in 2026. North America wants it. You think Cleveland could even be in the mix, or you want that? Why is that? No, no, I, I think we, I think uh, uh, Columbus could be in the mix. I'm okay. hoping we are too. But uh, nice. as of now, the the Gold Cup was in. They're playing in um, all NFL uh, uh, stadiums. So Cleveland was a destination spot for them. Right. So I yep. went there. Hey, anything I can do in Ohio and try to pump up the sport here because it's been so good to me. And I see the growth. Like I said, um, this is uh, it's the it's the other football uh, co uh, yeah. country. And sure. but the way they. Uh, uh, kind of adopted us and started starting to love the game uh, of the other football of soccer um, it's been so cool to see so for here the sky's the limit and so cool to see how the fans their knowledge of the game has grown over the last 20 years here and I, I feel like they're bought in so hopefully Columbus gets one but um, Cleveland is on the spotlight yep. for the Gold Cup and um, you know hopefully in 2026 it's in here in the U United States and we could be a potential spot here that'd be awesome we, we gotta keep cooking I know you follow the Blue Jackets nationwide yeah. pride do they have enough talent right now yeah. to win a Stanley Cup here in the near future. Well, hey, man, they do. I mean, you're, if, and whenever you can win 17 games or whatever in they did in a row yeah. as a franchise, that shows you have great, you can do some yeah. some fantastic things. Now that they, they combine that whole season together, man, and uh, uh, I think some some beautiful things can happen. But in the meantime, they got a mix, like we did in 08, of a bunch of gritty veterans and a bunch of young, hun hungry, uh, um, uh, you know, youth guys that are ready to fight. Yep. So that 
that mix along with a with a great coach is a recipe uh, for success. And you know, we were we were close this year. You know, for whatever re reason, um, you know, Penguin has our uh, Penguins have our number. But, they have uh, everyone's. Number. They have everyone's <laughs> number. But <laughs> hey, hey, we'll be there. And then for me, uh, man, it looked right. I'm psyched for Jody Shelley and, and yeah. those guys. And uh, they do some great things here for for um, you know the city. And uh, I can't wait to see him next year. T G I F F F. What is Find Frankie yeah, Friday. Explain this well, to us. I, I, well, yeah, I, I, I started, mean, every Friday you're somewhere. Well, yeah, well, it started uh, actually. It started because um, I, I was playing. I have four kids. I, I have yeah. a 19-year-old boy, a nine-year-old boy, a six-year-old girl, and a one-and-a-half-year-old boy. My so goodness. I'm bought into Columbus, yeah. and uh, so I'm in from the high school level, college level, all the way down to the uh, kindergarten <laughs> level. Um, but uh, I, was, I was reading a book one night, and you know, there was a guy with kind of long hair. He had the hat, kind of actually like this, and we were, it was a Where's Waldo book. Yes, and my yes, son Where's went, Waldo? He goes, that way. He goes yeah. find Frankie, find Frankie, and That's he said funny. that. That's went, awesome. We'll put two and two together. So, hey, it's not rocket science, guys. I you love know, the it. Youth, uh, so, every Friday, I'm out and about in the city uh, when we have a home game, giving away tickets. Yes. I'm on Twitter, at Frankie Hiddick, too. You can't uh, miss this. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and right. on Instagram this. as well. So, look me up. I He's give away free tickets, guys. So, check He's it out. plugging left and right. We've got 20 seconds for a couple answers here. Go. Surf's up. up. Yeah. You were a big time this surfer. This is what we were, yeah. yeah we big were, time surfer. This did, is you, awesome. did you make the right call, soccer over surfing? You know what? I, I grew up in a, in a small town, San Diego. There was a little hippie town. It was right the beach and I had surf PE every other day. Yeah. That, wow. So that was one of my high school classes. It was meet at the beach at seven in the morning and we won the high school uh, state surfing championship three years in a row. That's awesome. And I was a high school state surfing champion uh, wow. one of those years. So uh, I, it's something that I loved, I wanted to do. Um, all of a sudden Ziggy Smith came calling at UCLA and I said, Mom and Dad, I want to go surfing. I want to be a surfer. That's awesome. And they said, No. You're, you're going, going to, to college. Place, you're, you're going to college. Yeah. You're going to play soccer. Great, uh, for me, it was a great decision. A lot of my buddies are professional surfers. We all went Can to great Can you teach way. us sometime? I'd yeah. appreciate that. Yeah, we'd love that. that. Yes. Last <laughs> one, and, and I just want a one-word answer. You have a son named Hendrix. Yes. Mm. Who's the better musician, Jimi Hendrix or Bob Marley? Oh, man. Oh, how can you put me on the spot like There's that? Well, the two of my kids are named after both of them. That's so my, cool. my other son's uh, named Nesta, which is Robert Nesta Marley. Yeah. He's named after Bob Marley. So, uh, you know, those are uh, two of the guys that I listened to before games that really brought the energy to me in a game that I played in. And often our, our locker room listened to both those guys, Wanda. Hendrix and, yep. and Marley. Wanda. So it's all about good vibes. Well, guys, and, and by the way, we have the, the, the Nordeck Cup champs. Frankie, thanks again Love for coming hey, in. Guys. Nordic Cup Champs! They got Stars Three We're years on here on Wall to Wall Sports <laughs> delivered by Donatos. Put that on. That's right, running. it is the Wall Wizard making moves last night in Game 6 of the NBA Playoffs between Washington and Boston. We'll show you what he did to push the series to a Game 7. That